we welcome you this evening to the solemn liturgy for Good Friday. Tonight we center on the crucifixion of Jesus. Tonight we will celebrate his life and remember him through the passion of St. John, through a meditation, and through the solemn prayers. We invite you into this night to be still and to receive the blessing of God on this night of sacrifice. We pray that you join us where you are to find rest for your soul. Blessed be God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to look with mercy on your family, for whom our Savior Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This was 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. We kneel at the foot of the cross tonight in the face of senseless suffering. Tonight we are surrounded by billions of others who are on their knees in the midst of a global pandemic. Those who have lost their loved ones are overcome by their pain and grief. Their eyes cannot be dried. They are inconsolable. They are sad beyond belief. No words can dent their pain, and yet, as we are separated one from another, it is only words we have to give to their pain. How can hope be expressed in the face of such suffering as this? Where do we find answers in the midst of such suffering and loss? We are not the first to be crumpled and crushed by such suffering. We will not be the last. In his book, Night, survivor of the Holocaust and Nobel Peace Prize winner Eli Wiesel relates this story to what happened to him when he was a 16-year-old prisoner in Auschwitz. Today, he writes, the SS hung two Jewish men and a boy before the assembled inhabitants of the camp. The men died quickly, but the death struggle of the boy lasted half an hour. Where is God? Where is he? One man cried out. As the boy, after a long time, was still in agony on the rope, I heard another man cry, Where is God now? And I heard a small voice within me answer, He is here. He is hanging on the gallows. It is difficult to speak of this horror. It is difficult to speak of the horror of the cross. But we must remember that God is not an executioner and never will be the executioner. God is not the torturer or the tyrant. Between the sufferer and the one who causes his suffering, between the victim and the executioner, God is always on the side of the sufferer. God is on the side of the victim. God is on the side of the one being hanged on the gallows. And God is dying on the cross tonight. But what about the child hanging there? What about the Son of God hanging there? We too easily say when he's gone, oh, he is with God. He is in heaven. He has found peace. And when we say these things, cynicism settles into the soul of the speaker and even more into the souls of the listeners. Followers of Jesus and anyone else that's listening tonight hear only the sound of the suffering Hear the sounds of those who are dying. Tonight we should all get out of the way of ourselves. We should all be silent. We should all listen to those who have lost so much and are still losing so much. Listen to the centurion in the Gospel of Mark who proclaims, Surely and truly this man was the Son of God. Listen to young Eli Wiesel. Here is God. He is hanging here on the gallows. You see, every one of the six million who died in the Holocaust was God's beloved son, was God's beloved daughter. Just as every one of the tens of thousands of our global sisters and brothers who have died from COVID-19 are God's beloved sons and God's beloved daughters. Every one of them is with God, as God was with them every day of their lives. If we say any different, shame on us. 
Listen to the grief-stricken voices of faithful men and women who cry and can barely speak, who weep and have almost no words to express how deep their pain is and how great their loss is. They only have tears, only heartbroken sobs. Listen to them. Be still and listen to them. On this night, when Passover and Passion meet at the gallows, listen. Hear the cries of every one of God's sons and daughters who suffer in this pandemic and all the other children of God who are suffering unto death in conditions that have been inflicted by tyrants and torturers. Tonight, listen to the children crying to us from refugee camps and on the borders of our own country. Listen to their mothers and fathers who are crying to us to pay attention to them, to see them still as children scream in pain from abuse and neglect unto death. Listen. Tonight, God is not in heaven. Tonight, God is on the gallows. Tonight, God is on the cross. Tonight, God is on the border, and God is in refugee camps, and God is in the hospitals where people are suffering in this evening. God is in the tears of everyone who suffers now, and God's love is no otherworldly or beyond us in heaven kind of love. God's love is hanging there right in front of us, sitting there right in front of us, looking at us, crying to us right in front of us. And now it ends. This suffering unto death. Our young man hanging on that cross has laid down his life for the life and salvation of the world for you, for me. He has come to us. He has come to us and given us everything he has. He has given us everything he has. He has come so that God's spirit in him may live forever. As he dies, as he says, it is finished. Let us listen to him because he speaks on behalf of every child of God before him, every child of God with him in the time, and all who have come after. And then he is gone. Where is God now? God is here. He is still with us. He is hanging with us and for us and will remember us. So let us remember him. Amen. This evening, we take an offering for Amethyst House, a long-term gender-competent addiction and trauma treatment leader for homeless women and their families, located here in our neighborhood in Central Ohio. Checks can be made out to First Congregational Church, noting Amethyst House in the memo line. You may also give electronically by clicking on the QR code listed below, or at first at www dot first hyphen church dot org backslash give. Thank you for your generosity.
Please join us in the solemn prayers. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God may guide it and gather it together so that we may worship God in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all the nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church. Help it to persevere in faith, to proclaim your name, and to offer salvation, justice, and peace to people everywhere. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our pastors and other ordained and commissioned ministers for all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, whose spirit guides the church and makes it holy, strengthen and uphold our pastors and our leaders, keep them in health and safety for the good of the church, and help each of us to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation, that God may make them responsive to God's love and give them new life in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you continually bless the church with new members. Increase the faith and understanding of those who prepare for baptism and confirmation. Give them a new birth as your children. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation and faith. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not yet know the love of Christ to receive the good news of his love for all people. Help us, your people, to grow in love for one another to grasp more fully the mystery of your Godhead, and so too become more perfect witnesses for your, of your love in the sight of all people. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find the God who is the author and goal of our existence, Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all might long to know you and have peace in you. Grant that in spite of the hurtful things that stand in their way, all may recognize in the lives of Christians the tokens of your love and mercy and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God of us all. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts so that all of us may live in true peace and freedom. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us pray that the almighty and merciful God may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease.
Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Our Father who? in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 